All right, so in this video, we're gonna show how you can take a, an image and change the flooring like this really quickly and easily in Photoshop. And this is a great technique if you're needing to like just test some ideas or even just kind of visualize and illustrate an idea to a client. <laughs> So how to do this in Photoshop. Basically, first things first, you want to open up your image and make sure you right click and say layer from background. Because this is means this means we can actually go in and kind of edit it and deselect different things. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually select the floor. Now, because there's actually pretty good contrast in the flooring and the rest of the image here, I could probably try things like the magic wand or um, object selection tool, but because I know that's not always the case, I'm going to show you how I would go about kind of creating a cutout of the existing floor, and that's going to use the polygonal lasso tool. So it's going to be under the lasso tool. And and I use the polygonal lasso tool because I think it just gives you a little bit more control and especially with interiors and architecture you're gonna have more straight lines to kind of play around with so with the polygonal lasso tool we are going to zoom in select everything that's the floor And I'm going to just go over the stool for now because I'll come back and fix that in a second. And let's just select all of the floor. Perfect. Now I'm going to use the Alt key to deselect the area of the stool legs. So Alt, and we're going to just subtract from our selection. The stool legs. And perfect. So with that all selected, I'm going to say Control X or Command X if you're on a Mac and Control V. So we're just pasting it on where it's its own layer. So the flooring is all now separated from the, the rest of the, the design. So we just want to make sure. Yeah, perfect. All right. So now what we need to do is actually apply a new flooring on top of this. So I would really recommend using a seamless image and creating a pattern so you can kind of play around with the scale. My favorite source for seamless images is the SketchUp Texture Club. Um, you have a lot of options even with the free account. So I've downloaded this image from the SketchUp Texture Club and this is a seamless image so what I can do is actually create a pattern from it. So what I'm going to do is say edit, define pattern, give it a name, and we have a pattern. Now it looks like nothing's happened, but what has happened is actually it's giving us an option for us to play around with moving forward. So with back in our main Photoshop document, I'm going to create a new layer. And in this layer, all I'm going to do is just kind of draw a big rectangle and let's add in with our paint bucket tool, just a big color there. So it, we're just drawing a rectangle essentially, um, but we're filling it with um, any color. It's just gonna be this rasterized rectangle in our file. So now I can go to effects, pattern overlay, and I can choose from my options the pattern that I just made. Now the reason I like to do it this way is that we can really play around with scale. So if it needs to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depending on the image that you've brought in you know, from the internet, then you can really play around with it and you're not having to like copy and paste a bunch of different versions of the same, um, same texture. Now I think something like that. I could even play around with the angle. So maybe if I wanted it horizontal, I could play around with that. But I'm going to keep it at zero for now. And we have this new rectangle that is our flooring texture that we're going to add. Now, you might be wondering, this, you know, this is just a big rectangle. It's kind of in the way. And actually, let's make it even bigger. And it's definitely in the way. 
And so now, in order to apply this as a texture onto the flooring that I've already cut out, I'm going to rasterize it. So right click, rasterize layer style. Then I'm going to do something called a clipping mask. So if I right click on my layer and say create clipping mask, basically what that means is it's going to crop that image that we've just made of the flooring texture to the shape of the flooring underneath. So it's just cropped it down. Now technically you could leave it as is, but I think this is kind of the lazy way to do it. I think you could really, you know, make it look 10 times better with just a few more steps. So to do that, what you want to do is with your new flooring layer selected, go to control T or command T if you're on a Mac and let's transform this. So first, if this is in perspective, there'd be a little bit of foreshortening something like that. And of course the angles of the flooring would look different. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say perspective and I'm going to move it around like this. And actually I think this is going to be our giveaway here. We have this line here. So we need to make it where the flooring looks like it is in line with the rest of the architecture. And I think that looks pretty good. So all I've done here is just a couple of transforms. So I right clicked and did the perspective and I just kind of shifted things around with the transform tool. Press enter when you're done. And now you have some flooring texture that's in perspective. Now, I still think there's a little bit of a giveaway here. So first of all, I think for some reason, this is, I think it might be the resolution of my monitor, but I'm going to select the background layer and just kind of drop it down a little bit so we don't see that gap there. And I'm also going to move that original image on top of my flooring image. And where it doesn't look so cut and paste, I'm actually going to take this image, add another effect, and add a drop shadow. Basically, I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow wherever this image meets the new flooring texture. Now, you can play around with different text settings, like I think that's a little bit too dramatic, um, but maybe just a little bit, something like that. You could play around with the, the size of everything, the distance of the quote-unquote um, drop shadow, as well as kind of that, you know, the spread in size. So I'm going to kind of leave it here just because I think it adds a little bit more texture and nuance here. And all it took was an extra couple seconds. So now really quickly, now let's crop our image so we don't have the, the empty parts up and down. Really quickly, we were able to test what this new flooring would look like compared to the original. And it looks pretty good in just Photoshop without having to do any digital modeling or anything else of that nature. I hope that helps. If you like that video, then click to subscribe for more videos all about software and digital skills for interior design.